Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? At the end of the month, all of the things I procrastinate on come back around and haunt me and my to-do list. I find myself working late, unable to enjoy date nights, and staying up past my bedtime to rush and get everything done. I am somebody who never misses deadlines, and that matters a lot to me, which is why the end of the month can be such a stressful time. But this month was honestly the first month in a long time that I didn't feel that way, and here's why. I used Sunsama. They're the only planning assistant that'll act as your friend in need if you want to prevent burnout and establish a sustainable routine. It pulls your emails, calendar events, and tasks from your favorite apps into one focused view for just today and only today and handholds you towards work-life balance. Guess what? You don't even have to put in your credit card to try it out today. So give it a try and plan your day in Sinsama and click the link below to learn more. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glanz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Here we are. It is the end of the month. I just ate one of my most favorite things in the world. I don't know if you are a Trader Joe's person. I'm like half Trader Joe's, half Whole Foods. I feel like... I can't get everything I need from just one of those places. So if I had my dream weekend, it would be to go to Trader Joe's for half of the things and Whole Foods for the other half of the things. One of the things I love at Trader Joe's are the ice cream cones. They're called Hold the Cones. They're mini frozen ice cream cones and you can get them of all different flavors. I get the oat milk ones so that they're vegan They taste like real ice cream, and because there's so many, it's just like, oh my god, I feel like you could have like three or four of them. That's probably like too much for the average person, but I'm eating three or four of them. They're just so, so, so good. They make the perfect dessert, especially if you can't run out to the ice cream store and get a cone with ice cream in it. So that is like my Trader Joe's go-to staple. The other things I absolutely love at Trader Joe's, they're not like the traditional things that everyone loves, but I love getting nuts there because I feel like they're less expensive. I love getting some fruit there and I love some of the things in the frozen section, like the rice and some other things, but I can't get everything I need at Trader Joe's because they don't have some things that let's say Whole Foods has. Also, this might be controversial, but I think Whole Foods has better produce sometimes. So If I could have my dream weekend, I would just go to both and I would also go to Home Goods and I would also go to Target and TJ Maxx. That would be like the dream, dream weekend for me. Anyway, as we head into the end of the first month of the year, I still find myself saying Happy New Year to people. But aside from that, I still find myself feeling this intense pressure to make 2023 such a big year, a positive year, one that is filled with so many goals. I don't know if you feel this way, but I always feel like the start of a new year can feel like a 5K race that you completely regret signing up for. Back when I was obsessed with running, my running coach would always say, Jen, the thing about you is that you have to learn how to start slow. It's called momentum. You have to continue to build it to have it. But then I'd lace up my sneakers and I'd start running at full speed even before I left my front door. I would just completely ignore that advice because to start slow in my mind meant that meant that you were setting yourself up for failure, meant that you were never going to pick up speed and get fast. But the truth is what it really meant was that you don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself that you can start slow, maintain a pace, and then speed up. So to start slow, you have to be patient. You have to accept a new way of doing things. It might be completely different than the way you're already doing things, especially as you've entered a year feeling like you have to hustle and go fast and do so much. You might be ending this month feeling so incredibly burnt out. To me, that sounds really hard to do in all honesty. Every time I start a new year, I'm like, okay, we're not going to rush into doing a million things. We're going to start slow. We're going to be different than who we are. We're going to try new things and we're not going to 
burn ourselves out by the end of the month. And at the end of the first month of every year, which is how I'm feeling now, I go against that goal because it's just not in my natural nature to start slow and do just two things if I can do 25. Deep down inside, I'm a fast-paced, reckless, anxious person who is so passionate about everything. Honestly, I'm so passionate that sometimes people are like, you need to calm down. So when someone tells me to slow down, take a breath, or start off with a light jog, I react with fear, frustration, this temper that makes me just want to do the opposite. I have spent so many years of my life just trying to prove everybody wrong, and I don't want to do that anymore. I'm starting to have this realization that this year is the year that I want to prove that other people are right. There's a power to warming up before you chase after something. I know that when I get these ideas, when I get these passions and these dreams, I just act on them. I don't think through them. I don't plan for them. And because of that, I end up making mistakes and sometimes it works out, but more than likely it doesn't because I haven't warmed up. But the older I get, the more I'm starting to realize that there's power in being unhurried and reacting with urgency all of the time. It can be a real gift to look forward at your life and say, I might not know how many more days I have left to live, but I know that I don't have to live all of them with a hunger to go so fast. That is like my mantra of the year. Jen, stop rushing through the hours like there's some sort of background countdown clock. I remember back when I was a runner, there was this one time I did listen to my coach and I started slow and it was so painful because it went against everything I ever believed in. I'm not going to lie to you. I felt like it was so boring. I felt like I was wasting my time. I felt like I was going to be so embarrassed at the end of the run, but at mile five, I picked up speed just like she told me I should. And I felt like I could fly, like I could really fly, which truly is anything I ever want from this life. I want to do big things. I want to feel like I'm living in the sky. I want to go so fast that I can fit everything in. But the truth is the only way to do that is to start slow. However you're feeling at the end of this first month of the year, I hope you remember this. Fight the urge to go so fast. I know I'm fighting it every single day because only then you'll feel like you're really flying. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.